Happy Monday and welcome to Overnight Defense, I'm Rebecca Keel, and here's your nightly guide to the latest developments at the Pentagon, on Capitol Hill and beyond. The top line, it's been about two weeks since President Trump Donald John Trump Pompeo to outline post-deal strategy on Iran Trump asking aides whether he should proceed with North Korea summit, report stopping Robert Mueller to protect us all more announced he was withdrawing from the Iran nuclear agreement and left the world wondering where U.S. Strategy goes from here. On Tuesday, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo Michael Mike Richard Pompeo Pompeo to outline post-deal strategy on Iran Trump asking aides whether he should proceed with North Korea summit, report Venezuela's Maduro set to win in presidential election derided by U.S. as a sham, more sought to answer that. In a speech at the Conservative Heritage Foundation, high first major foreign policy address since becoming chief diplomat, Pompeo vowed to do three things, impose the strongest sanctions in history, crush Iranian aggression and advocate tirelessly for the Iranian people, through that, he said, the administration hopes for a new deal that covers 12 areas, though he said, the deal is not the objective, what are the 12 things? Per Pompeo, the United States is demanding that Iran give the International Atomic Energy Agency IAEA, a full account of the prior military dimensions of its nuclear program, stop enrichment and never pursue plutonium reprocessing, including closing its heavy water reactor, provide the IAEA with unqualified access to all sites throughout the entire country, and ballistic missile proliferation and halt development of nuclear-capable missile systems, release all U.S. citizens, as well as citizens of partners and allies and support to terrorist groups, including Lebanese Hezbollah, Hamas and the Palestinian Islamic Jihad, respect the sovereignty of the Iraqi government, including by permitting the disarming, demobilization and reintegration of Shia militias, and support for the Houthi rebels in Yemen and work towards a peaceful political settlement there, withdraw all forces under Iranian command throughout the entirety of Syria, and support for the Taliban and other terrorists in Afghanistan, and the Quds forces support for terrorists and militant partners around the world, stop threatening behavior against its neighbors, including Israel, Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates. Cheers and jeers, reaction stateside fell along the typical fault lines. Groups who opposed the Iran nuclear deal were supportive of Pompeo's speech while those who support the deal blasted the speech. For example, on the one hand, from United Against Nuclear Iran CEO Mark Wallace, Secretary Pompeo wisely made the case that the United States needed to tackle the danger from Iran in a comprehensive manner. For too long, the United States has focused on the nuclear file to the exclusion of a wide array of additional problematic activity, and on the other, from Jamal Abdi, Vice President for Policy of the National Iranian American Council, the Trump administration is setting the stage for a war of choice with Iran, with Mike Pompeo offering a smokescreen of diplomacy to distract from the administration's pursuit of Iraq-style regime change, global reaction, Iran, not surprisingly, rejected Pompeo's speech, who are you to decide for Iran and the world? President Hassan Rouhani was quoted as saying in Iranian state media. Britain Foreign Secretary Boris Johnson, meanwhile, was skeptical at the United States' ability to get such a comprehensive deal, the prospect of a new Jumbo Iran treaty is going to be very, very difficult, Johnson said. I think if you try now to fold all those issues, the ballistic missiles, Iran's misbehavior, Iran's disruptive activity in the region and the nuclear question, if you try to fold all those into a giant negotiation, a new Jumbo, Run negotiation, a new treaty, that's what seems to be envisaged, I don't see that being very easy to achieve, in anything like a reasonable timetable, Pentagon's role, Pompeo promised to work closely with the Pentagon on Iranian aggression. When asked what that might look like Monday, a Pentagon spokesman hinted at a more aggressive posture, we are going to take steps necessary to address Iran's malign influence in the region. Defense Department spokesman Rob Manning told reporters at the Pentagon they are a destabilizing force in the region. And we're going to do everything we can to avert that, Manning added.
This is a whole of government solution that we're working in order to change Iran's influence in the region and we are continuing to do that, NDAA watch, it's a busy week for movement on the National Defense Authorization Act, NDAA, with the House version set to hit the floor and the Senate Armed Services Committee starting markups on its version. The Hills Ellen Mitchell took a look at how this year's Senate process feels different without a certain feisty chairman in town. The Senate Armed Services Committee is moving forward with its annual defense authorization bill with Sen. John McCain John Sidney McCain Trump's plan to claw back spending hits wall in Congress defense bill moves forward with lawmakers thinking about McCain how House Republicans scrambled the Russia probe more Aries undergoing treatment to battle brain cancer 2,200 miles away in Arizona. McCain for the last several years has been the major force behind crafting the NDAA and moving it through committee, the rest of the Senate in negotiations with the House. His convictions on curtailing program overruns and eliminating wasteful spending have earned him a reputation as a force to be reckoned with among Pentagon officials and defense contractors. As the committee now takes up this year's NDA, his absence has been felt, according to lawmakers, it's a challenge simply because it's a little bit different having the chairman physically removed, the committee's ranking member Sen. Jack Reed John, Jack, Francis Reed defense bill moves forward with lawmakers thinking about McCain overnight defense, Trump aides comment mocking McCain sparks outrage, Aspel gets another, no, vote, Pompeo floats North Korea aid for denuclearization politicians, media explode over White House aides comments more, DRI, said of the bill's process, McCain is, someone with such great experience and expertise. He is participating through his staff and as a result he's been able to provide, as he used to do, direction, in the House. The House Rules Committee is in the midst of a meeting to set up floor debate on the NDA, along with two other bills. It's set to meet again Tuesday afternoon to decide which of the hundreds of amendments will make it to a floor vote. As of 5.30 p.m., 571 amendments have been filed on the bill follow along at the Rules Committee website. More bad stats for Afghanistan, another watchdog is out with another report casting a dim outlook on U.S. Efforts in Afghanistan The Quarterly Inspector General report on the U.S. mission in Afghanistan said there has been minimal progress in securing the Afghan population since its last report. The report is written by the Inspectors General for the Pentagon, State Department and U.S. Agency for International Aid. As of January 31, 65% of the Afghan population lived under government control or influence, compared with 64% last quarter. The Taliban, meanwhile, kept control of the same percentages last quarter, 12%. The Inspector General's report comes after one from the Special Inspector General for Afghanistan Reconstruction finding high attrition in Afghan forces. Read Monday's full report here. On tap for tomorrow the Senate Armed Services Committee has closed markups of the National Defense Authorization Act for five subcommittees, Sea Power, Readiness, Cyber Security, Emerging Threats and Strategic Forces. https colon slash slash without ly slash to hilayu 9 the senate armed services personnel subcommittee has an open markup of the national defense authorization act at 2 30 p.m at the Hart senate office building room 216 https colon slash slash without ly slash to hilayu 9 the senate foreign relations committee has a business meeting for a treaty and legislation including a resolution to require a certification on saudi actions in yemen at 2 15 pm at senate side of the capitol room 116 https colon slash slash bit dot ly slash 2 lh 4 cod house rules committee will meet to decide national defense authorization act nda amendments get a floor vote at 3 p.m at the house side of the capitol room 313
https colon slash slash bit dot ly slash two chlorxisme dash dash the hill kim jang un surprises with savvy power plays the hill doj trump reach deal on expanded russia review the hill trump presses china to be strong North Korea The Hill, White House releases commemorative coin for North Korea talks Associated Press, Syrian government declares capital fully under its control Washington Post, new clues bolster belief that ISIS leader is still alive, and busy with a chilling new mission.